So, are you guys hearing me? Yes? Okay. So, just to check if you are awake, let's just be a big Ola, okay? One, two. No, I'm kidding. I'm not that type of person. Uh, because actually, I'm worse. So, it means that I always start my presentations asking for people to handshake. Um, so, again, I would like to invite you guys that are watching me, Team Diogo, right? to handshake the next person close to you, invite him to that presentation. So just handshake it. Handshake the person, compliment. In the end of the event, we're now gonna you know, talk to the other person. Go ahead, guys. I don't have anyone here, so it's okay. Uh, it's challenging because some people have their own handshakes. Other people have challenging handshakes. So there's a prize for the one who can do that right now in front of the audience. Anyone? Are you guys still hearing me? Okay, nice. <laughs> so um, my name is Diogo Souza. I'm a Java developer. I work for PagSeguro. I'm pretty sure that you guys heard that before. And I am a clean code maniac. That's what we can call it because I'm very addicted to performance stuff as well as clean code. So one of the, my favorite books is the Clean Code Act, like you've probably heard before. And no, I'm not a designer, I guess. I just put it there to try to be fun, but I guess it's not, not worked that out. Um, I'm a Java developer. I'm pretty sure that you guys heard that uh, uh, annoying campaign of Pikesiguru and stuff, right? The Mirizi, yeah, that song. I know, it's so annoying. I hope my boss is not hearing me right now or watching that presentation because, oh, it's in the elevators. <laughs> the elevators of the company has this song and I can't deal with that anymore. And look at me, I'm just doing a merchandise on my company without even wanting. But anyway, I'm also the creator of Alta Luna, which is a community of people that I would like to help to learn how to program and beginners and all of those things. Okay. So, GraalVM, uh, who are the Java developers here? Let's just raise the hands. Java? Two people, three. Oh, it feels like home. I am home right now. <laughs> so many Java developers. You guys can't wait to see the cold demonstration because it's so, it's be so familiar, right? Um, <laughs> but guess what? GraalVM, it's not only about Java. It was born in the Java world, but it's also a uh, world where we're accepting everybody else. So it was born with the intention, it's a project, uh, basically a new project that was born with the intention of being polyglot. Not only polyglot, but with a lot of different things, different stuff we're gonna talk right here, but mainly polyglot. It means that you can run Java code along with Python, Ruby, C, C++, and that's it. We're still working out, they're still working out with other languages, but we are opening the whole stuff for these different languages. Um, some bullet points here are, it's universal VM, right? Uh, we used to listen, hear a lot about virtual machines. So the, this is a new one. Uh, it's a kind of a substitute for the hotspot or the famous Java VMs we had before, but now it's super super fast and open source, of course. Uh, we always say that, but Oracle, it's, it's made under Oracle Labs, which means that they always make a shitty open source version, and then they build another uh, enterprise version that they're gonna say, sell to their clients, and it's faster, it's better. So don't use the community edition, use the enterprise edition, that's what they say. And in these <laughs> examples, we're gonna use also the enterprise edition. Um, it's polyglot, as I said. We're gonna hang in a little bit about it uh, in a few minutes. So this is basically how it works. You can see a lot of uh, common languages right there, up there. We have Kotlin and all the stack of languages based on JVM. So if you're programming Scala, is there anybody else here programming with Kotlin, Scala, or other than Java? Oh, 
three, four, five other people. The family is just growing. Thank you, guys. <laughs> it's good to know. Um, JavaScript as well. Uh, it supports JavaScript until its version 2017 of ECMAScript, but they're always working to improve you know, the, the, the stack and the versions of the languages. And we have Ruby, R, Python, and the tools of C, C++, and R. If you're an R developer, we also provide this support. I say we, it's like I work for Graalvim. No, guys, I don't work for them. I'm just here talking about that because it's really nice and cool, but I don't work for Oracle. And uh, what happens in the end is that uh, GraalVM automatically transforms you know, the code that you develop on those languages because it has their own interpreters for each of these languages to machine code. So it's pretty straightforward the way you're going to use it because you're, you're not going to lose any of the legacy code or the, the way you, you're dealing with that code you're used to to developing GraalVM. And it translates it to native code or to any, many different platforms, that, as you can see here. So you have managed applications that can run in Oracle database. Of course, it's going to be Oracle because, anyway, it's Oracle. And Node.js, they, ha they have their own implementation of Node.js. Uh, now the JavaScript developers are just staring at me and saying, how dare you? How dare you to implement a new Node.js version? Well, it was not me. It was there. <laughs> And OpenJDK. So if you're already using OpenJDK or Hotspot JVM, you're going to be fine with it. OK. Uh, let's dive into the architecture a little bit. Uh, I like this part because here we're in introducing a new framework. It's called Truffle. Truffle, like, yeah, the thing that you can eat. Uh, Truffle frame framework was a new stuff that came within the GraalVM. They created specifically for GraalVM in order to provide support for Ruby, R, Node, J JavaScript, and, our, and the, those other platforms. If you use Java or Kotlin or Scala or any JVM-based applications, you're going to have these uh, uh, automatically uh, uh, accessible within Gra GraalVM. But for other languages, Basic, what it basically do is to make use of Truffle Framework to compile and to translate the AST, we've heard of that before, the AST, the trees uh, that the node guy was talking about a little bit uh, earlier, to um, bytecode. So bytecode's the huge uh, secret of Java, v J JVM languages, and uh, it, that's how Truffle Framework works. Um, does anyone know? <laughs> LLVM, you know that part here of Sulong LLVM. Have any, has anyone heard of it before? One person, two. Oh my God, who's that boring guy that they brought here to talk about old stuff? Just bring back the Node.js guy or any cool stuff or React related that was seen before. Come on, <laughs> uh, LLVM. It's Yes, an old stuff, but it's awesome because it was a kind of a two, sh two chain that was developed to, as a middleware layer uh, to convert you no know, C or C++ or Ruby has a lot of different supports to uh, a com with an AST and to a common output. So it's like you have the uh, LLVM layer and everything you have here like C and C++ is going to be compiled and translated to another uh, 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 compilation output that it's understandable and, and, and common. So instead of me, that wants, that wants to give support for different languages, uh, make you understand how C, C++, or Ruby works, I'm going to make you work, talk to me through LLVM, and I'm going to understand just one single at output. So that's how they do the magic. Uh, in the end, you're going to see that we have Java Hotspot VM right here, a VM that they created for the project in Graal Compiler, which is the thing that makes it really, really fast. Um, so uh, I, I don't know if you guys have heard about Rhino or Nesthorn. We did have some intentions of running JavaScript in the server before with, within Java. So Rhino is one of the oldest from Mozilla. Uh, I think that was kind of the most famous one because at that time, if you want to run Rhino, you just need to uh, have Java and 
it would work in the back end, in the back end with uh, the JVM. And then they came up with Nesforn, which is a new version from Java 7 on. That version uh, was a little bit cooler and faster because Rhino was a little bit slow. But then it happened that we came up with Node.js. No, it was the Node.js boom, and everybody was just migrating to use JavaScript at a hole in the back end. So um, it's not like JRuby or Jiten. It's they, they are different kinds of implementations that make use of both worlds, but are a common platform. It's a unified platform, so it's different from uh, what we have now with GraalVM. With GraalVM, we're going to use Python itself. We're going to use Node.js itself. It is Node JavaScript and, and Python and R and all those languages. Here, it's different. It's like a mix of those languages in a common set of tools that you're going to implement in your applications. Yeah, they love Rhino so much. <laughs> I don't understand why. Um, so why GraalVM? I like this one because Chris Sitton, which is the head chief of this project at Oracle Labs, and the, chief, the creator of Truffle for Ruby, he's very known in the Ruby community. I don't know if there, there's any Ruby developer here. You, you develop in every single language. You're just raising your hand every time. What about R? Do you know R? Oh, come on. <laughs> now I'm disappointed. <laughs> so um, Chris Sutton is the, the, the chief, the main chief in, uh, of the project there, and he's responsible for the whole implementation of Ruby, which is really, really hard. It, it's hard to use because you have to install a lot of things and you have to rebuild a lot of, a lot of things. Imagine to create those things. So the guy is really smart. Um, and he created a fam famous post where he talks about 10, 10 things that it's interesting to do with GraalVM. The first one is super fast. It is really fast. So for, for guys that are used to work with Java or Scala or any JVM-based languages and see that, OK, I have that speed. I cannot you know, speed it up that much. With GraalVM, you can without doing anything. You just have to switch from the old hotspot or the old VM you're using to the new one, and that's it. And you increase up to five times the execution of your algorithms just doing by this single move. Can I get in? Whoa, right here, right now? Wow, there's a lot of people looking at me. Team Diogo, Team Diogo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's super fast. It really is. It's incredible what you can do with it. And I, I had an example here. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough, enough time, but I would like love to show you guys how you can increase the speed of those things by five or up to ten times faster depending on the environment you're using. Gra with GraalVM, Ruby or Python, depending on the algorithm, are even faster than Python and Ruby itself. So it's another whoa. <laughs> but second stuff, um, low footprint and fast startup. This is even more incredible because startup stuff is one of the things that people usually hate in Java, right? Oh my god, I have to wait for two, 20 seconds for having a spring application, for example, to start up and, uh, and so on. So here we got something around 50, 50 times faster than usual you know, setups with spring or other technologies they use with Java. Hold on, not yet. So, um, so you have heard of microservices, of course, and this is a huge battle because, for example, people used to have monolithics. Who here worked in a monolithic before? Raise your hand. Shame on you guys. Shame on you. Are you still working with monolith monolithics now? You again? <laughs> I wanted to see your name after that. Uh, so we used to see, OK, I have a monolithic, and I have to migrate. I should migrate to microservice architecture. Everybody's talking about that. I can't hear it anymore. It's just like the you know, Mother Nia song. And, uh, but OK, we have to do that. The problem is everybody's doing that move unconsciously. You have really to think about it and think of your code to not you know, just transport the same code to a new infrastructure. 
I say this because every time I see someone making the move, I ask them, uh, well, uh, what about the code? Are you guys rethinking the code? Are you guys you know, analyzing it and, and thinking if we can make it faster or something? Um, no, we're just doing, I just work here, you know. Those things <laughs> come up every time we ask such a thing. But um, now it's another question. Who here um, has started, ha has seen someone that works with you start to code a new stuff without even thinking about performance of memory management? Who? Come on, don't lie. Everybody, raise, raise your hands. Everybody, come on. You're, you're a bunch of liars. <laughs> because I think you are the first ones who, when you have to code someone something new, you're going to just look at the code and start right doing it without even thinking about memory or time consuming at the end. Un unless your boss just come to you, oh my god, the, the system's too slow, let's do something. Oh yeah, let's do something, let's put GraalVM and so everything okay. Well, that's a great move. It's going to improve a little bit, but you know, not in the whole. So think about it. Here, we're going to switch AVM to another one, and with a single move, you're going to increase five times the speed of your application and up to 50 times the, the startup, of start, startup time. Why not? Let's just make, it, make a try and see what happens with it. Um, here's some graphs. We love graphs, right? Um, this is a graph from memory footprint. Here we can see, I, I'm pretty sure that you guys don't know Halidon, Micronaut, or Quarkus. They're kind of the Oracle and Java E versions of, platform versions of microservices. Spring is the most famous one, but they do not, oh yeah, Spring, it's cool, but no, here we're going to go with our own stuff. Uh, Quarkus improves in, this is the footprint. So uh, the, the orange one is the, the, the memory consuming 17 megabytes of an application running against the same version of GraalVM hotspot mode. Hotspot mode is like you're using the usual JVM. Uh, 121 megabytes. This is the memory footprint, footprint of the same application running at the same time. I don't care about memory. Let's just, you know, uh, put some more nodes. We're, we're horizontal now, right? We don't need like to scale vertically. We can do that horizontally because we are the cool guys. We are the microservices guy. So it's that, if that thing is just low, put some more nodes on that. Come on. What about auto scale? We're an Amazon and uh, Kubernetes and those stuff. <laughs> no, come on. We have to think, think about, about a lot of other things like external resources or databases. Even if you increase the nodes, what, what's going to happen with your database? What's going to happen with the services that are external to it that you have to access? That it's from your friend that works close to you and he's going to punch you because you're just detonating my service. I'm receiving a lot of requests. Yeah, I know. Put some more nodes on it. Put some more nodes on it and it's going to resolve. Not like that. Uh, and this is the startup time, startup time of the same microservices uh, in the hotspot, the usual hotspot versus the orange GraalVM. Here, I don't know how to use it. Here you can see 16 milliseconds to start it up. 16 milliseconds against 940. It's not that much, but if you start to put things on that time after time, you're going to increase your application, and this time you're going to take. It's going to take a lot more to start. And if you think about serverless, we had some people talking about serverless before here, right? Uh, startup time is very important for your functions because if it takes too long, you're going to pay more, and you're going to, you know, delay the response of your services of your functions hosted there. And GraalVM is also a great bet for, uh, for a servlets as well. Um, number three, combine JavaScript, Java, Ruby, Python, R, that's the polyglot stuff, and I hate that picture because I love Teletubbies. I'm not sure if I'm <laughs> the only one here. <laughs> I think it's so just, you know, that guy at the school just right there at the corner and nobody wanted to play with him. And I was, just come on, buddy, come on. You know, you're too big. If it was a little bit small, you're going to just 
But no, HTML. <laughs> HTML ain't gonna work here, <laughs> unfortunately. And right now we have all those languages. We have more, right? You can see at the, the official documentation how how's work going, and they are willing to put even more languages into it. You know, to add support for more languages uh, in GraalVM. Uh, <laughs> I love that picture. It's like, oh, I'm so businessman. Let me show you some stuff. Right now, we have some bullet points. And those, <laughs> and those, <laughs> uh, sorry, guys. I, I didn't have enough time to change. So yeah, we're going to the moon. Uh, number four, run native <laughs> languages on the JVM. What? 22 minutes. OK, I'm going to go. Uh, Number four, run native languages on the JVM, C, C++. That's a good one, because usually people say, why do you keep coming back to the C and C++? Just leave them die. No, they're not going to die yet. They're super fast. But the thing is, imagine they're working in a project. <laughs> OK, everybody here, you're all mine now. <laughs> That's great. I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> oh, come on, don't record it. Please, cut it out. <laughs> uh, um, so number, <laughs> number four, uh, native languages is awesome because uh, uh, imagine that you have a, a, a program and you develop a way to, I don't know, um, receive some inputs and deliver a math, mathematical operation in it. And if you wanted to do, do that with Java, you have to do the whole stuff. You have to compile it. You have to generate a .jar file. And you have to send to someone else. And that person that's going to receive it has to have Java on that machine and has to understand how to run that application. And then they're going to start. So with native, the native images, it's pretty st straightforward. Because the only thing you have to know is how to run the command. And it's going to, re to, to read that application that algorithm that you've done and then generated a blob file and that blob file can just you know without Java without any language in your machine just execute it and be happy it's gonna take a while to launch but it's nice and super fast here we got something to 60 up to 70 times faster than if you run the same algorithm with Java itself another whoa Oh, the, the worst audience at all. <laughs> I was expecting more from you guys. <laughs> so number five, uh, tools that work across all languages. That was really nice, because you guys know Chrome DevTools, right? The DevTools from Chrome. Yes or no? Yes. Now it's better. Look at that. Uh, so the Chrome DevTools, it's very nice. It's well done, well developed, and well known for every JavaScript or web developer. And here, right now, we can use it as well. So if you run a Node.js application and you just print your script there into the Chrome DevTools, you can debug not only JavaScript code, but also Ruby, Python, R, every single code snippet. I stop right now. Code snippet that was built, that was built in any different language that you were using in your project. So it's a really nice tool that you can, it's available right now. And they're developing new ones like G, J Visual VM for analyzing the heap memory and threads and all of the context of your backend application and stuff. Uh, number six, extend a JVM based application via context. That's nice because when you wanted to code with, uh, with the Polyglot API, uh, GraalVM has a Polyglot API. It means that now I want to, in that big code, I wanted to run a code snip, snippet with Java, and then another one with R, and then another one. With the result of this one, I'm going to get the result and use into a Python snip, snippet code, and so on. So that API allows us to do that, and you don't have to code into strings, which is very common for old platforms that wanted to do this stuff with the polyglot and so on. Uh, I have 18 minutes. Where's the guy? Hey. Um, so I'm going to show you guys just a little bit of code uh, for you to see how th that works. 
Uh, number seven, extended native application. This is when you wanted to create your um, own implementation of a language or your own implementation of an already built-in language for yourself. Um, too complex, not gonna get into it right now. Number eight, Java code as a native library. That's what I just said a little bit ago. You just run it as a native, creating that blob file and just executing the Linux system or your Mac system or your unique Unix system and so on. Uh, number nine, Polyglot in the database. That is awesome. Not so awesome because it's Oracle. It only works for Oracle. Now they're working on MySQL for yeah, for the end of this year, I think they're going to release it. Uh, how how's that work? You're going to create, for example, a function or use an npm package that validates email, for example. We have a bunch of them, right? Uh, I'm not saying that you guys are the JavaScript guys, but I think that you are. But anyway, so you're going to grab one of those npm packages and install it directly into the database and when you run your queries instead of making a bunch of pl as pl sequels who know pl sequels here shame on you two right come on <laughs> that's sold that's old stuff now you don't need to use it you can go for uh the, the npm functions you can just call a validation and apply the results of your selects directly into this, these validations and transform it into a final table result. So the final table result will give you all the things transformed or validated or reapplied, whatever you do with your functions. And it, can only, it, can, it can't be only NPM. You can do that with the gems from Ruby. You can do that from any Java library or whatever language library you want to use here, right? Uh, and 10, create, create your own language. That was a good one as well, right? That picture. I changed the zeros and ones. Can you see right there? Just to look like more, you know, I'm programming here. She's not programming at all. So, um, set up install. It's, que it's pretty straightforward. Download it at downloads, add it to the path, and install the languages that you want. Java and JavaScript are already within it, so you don't have to do anything. But if you want to use Python or Ruby, you have to install it through command line. Yeah, let's some, make some code. Are you guys hearing me? Hearing? Hearing? No? Oh my god. Wait a minute. I can't see my mouse. Don't laugh at it. <laughs> okay. Can you guys see it? Neither can I. <laughs> what the heck? No, seriously? I can't, I can't see it. Wait. It's IntelliJ. It doesn't work. Sorry, guys. No, we're not that. We like the hard stuff, you know. You have to come here, set in. I have 14 minutes, and they're going to just end right here. Um, great, thank you. Oh, Jesus. No, it's done. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice guy there. <laughs> so guys, um, here you can see um, an example which also brings a thing called in Java, I don't know if you've heard of JMH. Has anyone heard of it before? No? Of course, we have three Java developers here. Who's going to you know, know it? Um, JMH, it's a nice, very nice feature that comes within Java 12 on, but we can add here through a library and add some annotations where you can use to test a benchmark. So it's really nice because uh, here, for example, I have an algorithm that reads a file, a TXT file full of random words, and you can see that we're using some functional programming here. Uh, with a lot of different, you know, maps and collections and streams and blah, blah, blah. And um, it's going to take a while to process. And, and 
as as longer as lengthier is the file, as much is going to take to end to, to process this algorithm. So it's nice because here I wanted to test if uh, the hotspot is really so slower than the GraalVM hotspot, and it those annotations they allow us to they allow us to program, for example, how many iterations we wanted to run with this algorithm, and uh, the mode that we want to run it, uh, here we're using the average time, and it's going to calculate how much time each iteration just took. And I can, oh shit, I'm sorry, I can't say this. Can I? So um, the, the output time win unit, I can use milliseconds or seconds or even days if you wanted to test if your code is uh, as lower than in, in certain conditions than in others. Uh, that would be nice. Here I have set the algorithm to run. Can you see guys, can you guys see this? GraalVM, that's my GRE, right? So I'm gonna run it in a different one, which is J JDK 1.8, which is not GraalVM. And then let's see how long it takes to run. So it runs and it brings some uh, stuff here. We, here we're going to start with the warm-up iteration number one. I programmed to, to, to show just one as well. And as long as the algorithm runs, we can see each iteration just showing how much, how long it takes to run the algorithm. Look, 17,000 17, milliseconds. That's 17 seconds to run uh, my code. And each iter iteration is going to be, you know, just printed here in the output uh, the same way I just programmed there. In the end, it's going to print the average of each iteration. And I can see, oh my god, that whole algorithm in that uh, VM just took that amount of time in average. Let it finish here. It's just the second one. It's going to take too much. Okay, so in average, 16 seconds to run. And then we're going to switch back to GraalVM. I'm going to change it again. Jesus Christ, that's so hard. GraalVM. It's like I'm an, I'm an old guy, like trying to. Right? Um, the, the code's just going to again, run again, and we're going to see how much. It's going to take compared to the previous one, and my heart is just, oh my god, too close, too close, too close. Yes, 12 seconds. Let's just wait to finish that iteration again. How's that? Everything okay, my family? Is it? 11? It's just reducing. Just another one. Yes, you guys trusted me, right? It's faster. <laughs> It is faster, but oh my god, I don't know. I, I don't believe that I came here and took all that lengthy 40 minutes to, show, to see you showing uh, a single example of four seconds of improvements. Yes, you did. I just would like to point out that this is a work of a lot of people, a lot of, you know, father of families, people that are just working hard for me to come here, show you guys, and you guys just, you know, be so proud of living in a world where we can have GraalVM, okay? <laughs> I'm going to get that tape and send to Oracle. I want a job there, please. <laughs> so, um... Okay, let me, try, let me try to, yeah. Uh, what's next? Uh, now I'm about to finish, I promise. Uh, what's next? Uh, first, you have to decide if you wanted to use it because you're not Java developer, so maybe you have to start programming in Java, and then you can enjoy it by yourselves. But you can also do the tests in other languages. No matter if you are uh, Ruby or Python and R, C, C++. Where's the guy of the C, C++, 1995? Oh, right here, guy. GraalVM. <laughs> oh, my 
my God, and you using Elixir is suffering long lines of code. No, just switch. You know, it's so easy. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Not so easy like that. Um, and you can mix those languages, you know, and do the test by yourself. So go and give it a try. It's going to take just, you know, 30 minutes to download because it's really heavy. But after that, it's just, it's just joy, you know, it's going to be fine. <laughs> And if you are already a Java or JVM based developer and use like uh, Java e or Spring or whatever, you can go for Quarkus, which is, oh my God, it's so fast. Those things that I showed you guys today, four seconds, this is incredibly fast, faster. You know, it's like five seconds, right? <laughs> so it's so fast. It really, it's really, really nice. And uh, there's a lot of, a bunch of tools that you can use like JPA, like Hibernate, like uh, AGB and other stuff that are already usable with Quarkus and uh, GraalVM for Kubernetes and the cloud. And yeah, join, join and participate. This is the repo, 9,990 stars. The last one was mine, right? Because, uh, yeah, I know it's mine. I just clicked there. And here you can find the official GitHub, GitHub repo. You can just go there and take a look at what's going on, the next releases and stuff. It's pretty cool. Uh, and totally ba backed by the community. <laughs> you saw the last slide. It was, oh my god, come on, last slide. Yes, thank you. <laughs>